universe. Well, I managed, spent the whole evening yesterday and now I'm taking a little bit of a break to shoot this wonderful video on World Cup qualifying outside of Europe. Uh, and yes, uh, I have for now mostly focused on Europe, not only on my channel, but personally. So kind of a uh, reflection of that as well. I have always had a eye a little bit on South America, Ball, a little bit on CONCACAF, but the rest, I, mea culpa, uh, it is something that I kind of let slide this time around. So not only was this now the first time I do it on a channel, it was also for me. So kind of really reflecting. However, I thought it is high time that we look into all that. I know that I wanted to do it in September, but September I just could not find the time. And I almost didn't do it now either, but yes, we got it. I also put the, yeah, with the Mali shirt, best shirt <laughs> this, on this wall. I put the 40 most likely qualifiers uh, but that I have in the collection. And as you can see, I'm very, very, very light on Asian teams with only Australia being on there. Uh, although two, Australia, uh, two Asian teams are more or less qual qualified. The third one, uh, highly likely. And yes, it will again be a task of mine to try to get a jersey from every team at the World Cup. And there will be an unpacking coming soon that will actually get me sooner, uh, closer to that goal. But for in order to figure out which uh, jerseys I may need to get, let's look at the teams. And I, I would say we'll start actually in Asia, uh, who kind of are the hosts of the World Cup. Who will join Qatar? Well, in Group A, uh, we are in the third round. So this is kind of this final round, two um, groups of six. And uh, in that one, we have kind of a group that's pretty much decided with Iran and South Korea looking very odds on. And uh, you see qual qualification chances for Iran and South, South Korea 99 and 100%. Uh, so they are very likely to be at uh, next year's World Cup. Kind of a little bit of political issue there as well with Iran and Qatar and, you know, um, you know all this region. But, you know, uh, so be it. And uh, empty Emirates most likely being in the playoffs. Much more open is Group B. However, Saudi Arabia, they only played uh, a one draw, I think it was uh, two... Um, Australia, if I'm not called, yeah, must have been to Australia. And the rest, they have been winning, so it's been very, very consistent. So it's between Japan and Australia, the two teams that you would actually expect to um, uh, come out of this group that basically are fighting for second spot. And at the moment, Japan, uh, having beaten us, uh, Australia 2-1, is in the driver's seat there. However, um, you know, still f a few rounds to be played for to be exact, so it's not a done deal by any stretch of the imagination. Australia pro going at the moment towards the playoff where they would play the Emirates. You can already see the qualification chance for Australia much higher. There will be a two-legged playoff for this fifth spot for uh, Asia between the third place teams. Uh, and then um, the loser of that one has actually then also another chance in a playoff, uh, most likely against New Zealand. You will not see Oceania here because there have not been anything, uh, which probably will do a quick qualifying tournament in Qatar itself. So yeah, interesting stuff uh, there too. In any case, most of these qualifiers here I've seen have already been taken place in Qatar. So uh, I find, find them get very, very interesting overall uh i guess it has also all to do with um corona pandemic we saw the arabia so set to qualify another one politically you know qatar and so the arabia also not at the moment liking each other so loads of interesting stuff um also notable how china is kind of out of it and to me i always thought that china will be one of the next teams that will qualify regularly no far from it they are actually uh always struggling to qualify so far Let's move on a little bit further west and let me go to Africa, who just finished their second round, which was a uh, group stage. And the African qualifying, yes, five spots is super brutal because we had now 10 groups of four with only the group winners 
qualifying to a playoff and then uh, there will be a random draw of who will move on. So we can see now, you already see the chances of qualifying are put there because we don't know the draw yet. So this is ahead of, of the draw. In group A, Algeria pipped Burkina Faso. Uh, you know, that was kind of a tight group. Um, Tunisia, Equatorial Guinea um, was tighter than one would expect. Zambia is a team that's kind of down a little bit. Uh, but, you know, Equatorial Guinea, they were, uh, I think, twice now the hosts of the AFCON and and, and so on, there were all kinds of uh, interesting things. Same thing goes for Cape Verde, um, who actually fall behind Nigeria. And the big one was on the last match, like Cote d'Ivoire was ahead of Cameroon. Cameroon needed to beat them in the last uh, game, which they did. And so Cameroon had a Cote d'Ivoire. The Cote d'Ivoire probably the biggest uh, team to fail in qualification, at least from Africa for now. Um, I think I would almost say overall too, because uh, in Europe it was not kind of, you know, for such a team that was regularly in there. Mali, guys here, no problem with, with their group, but when you look, look at their group, it was actually no, uh, not much of a contest to, to be honest. Same goes for Egypt with Gabon, Libya and Angola. Uh, Angola, you know, we had them in there a, a few times. Ghana needed a super soft penalty against uh, South Africa. Watch Gabriel Macotti Twitter to see this penalty where basically uh, the ball goes there. The Ghana player is ahead of a South African player and just falls down. And this is a penalty. Um, uh, South Africa actually demanding this game to be replayed. Most likely it will not, but that was kind of the big uh, story there. So Ghana, based on that penalty decision, penalty decision alone, uh, making it into the playoffs, but uh, not very... Uh, you know, the chances are not the highest, let, let's put it that way. Completely different for Senegal, who together with Algeria, one of the big favorites uh, to move on, also kind of toying with their group, uh, with Togo, Namibia and, and the Congo. Uh, and then the other two, and this, yeah, there's plenty of space to, for the playoff draw, which I don't have yet. Um, Morocco also perfect record really going through uh, in a also rather easy group and then in one of the more level groups uh, the DRC um, Democratic Republic of the Congo beating up Benin and Tanzania but uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised because Madagascar did so well not too long ago at the AFCON they finished bottom here they are still kind of by them at the minus but you know uh, so those are the 10 teams and the DRC of course being the least favorite one Time to jump ship even further west and we go to the Americas. And in common ball qualifying, we have already two qualified, the big boys, Brazil and Argentina. Uh, Argentina qualified after a nil-nil draw to Brazil. I talked a little bit about that the first game in Brazil. Uh, the authorities kind of called off uh, Brazil pretty spotless in qualifying and also Argentina. Uh, it's very, very early. We knew there was a lot more qualification drama. To me, the big story is that uh, little Ecuador look very much set on qualifying, whereas Colombia, Peru, uh, Uruguay are in real, real danger of missing out. And you see, I mean, the playoff spot is probably between Colombia, Peru, Uruguay, uh, potentially Chile. Uh, Peru, I don't like, I, I don't dislike their draw. Uh, Colombia having the big problem of uh, scoring. I think they haven't scored now in four games in a row. Uh, and, and therefore, there are not many wins. So otherwise, you would say Colombia probably the fourth best team. Peru had a horrible start. I think they lost... Uh, four of the, out of the first five and so on. Something to that effect, but they have been picking up the pace and are now suddenly finding themselves in fifth spot. Again, four games to go. I actually have a feeling that the Brazil-Argentina game will not be played because both are qualified and has no bearing on anything else in the qualification. So just saying that. And we'll finish up north with the biggest story, Canada. Very likely to qualify for the first time th since 86. They already played a 1-1 away to um, the United States. I think they also played a 1-1 in Mexico. And now they beat Mexico 2-1 in Edmonton in the, what they call the Ice Decker. Uh, great name. Uh, watch the highlights. I mean, the game is played on turf. Uh, so there's snow all around. It is, of course, cold, 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 cold. And I think when the second goal goes, got my favorite goal celebration of the year. The Canadian player just jumps but first 
into a pile of snow. It is awesome. Uh, Mexico looked for a long time good, but now they lost 2 0 to the US, 2 1 to Canada, both away from home. And in both cases, I mean, the US, they had a good first half. At Canada, only when it was 2 0, they kind of showed what they could go in. So there's a lot of drama in Mexico going on. And the United States also having a so and so qualifying campaign. You can say great at home. Away from home, yeah, I mean, I think there was a, was it a 4-1 at Honduras or something like that, where um, I think they lost 1-0 at El Salvador, and then at Honduras it looked really, really bleak, and only in the second half they suddenly scored four goals. Now at Jamaica they also played only 1-1. And I gotta say, I mean, we Europeans very often laugh a little bit about the um, CONCACAF uh, qualifying, because you think it's all so easy, but having watched a little bit of that, Playing in uh, the Caribbean or in uh, Latin America is not easy because the pitches are awful in CONCACAF. If you go away from the United States, you either have to deal with the uh, height in Mexico or with pitches and a very hostile cr crowds uh, some elsewhere. Uh, Canada is almost nice, but then, you know, the Canadians and uh, the Americans use, of course, the one uh, thing in their favor. If it is winter, we play up north to get a qualification. So this makes CONCACAF one of the more intriguing ones. I mean, uh, I would say it's the third most interesting qualifying campaign to me because of that setup as well. But yeah, it seems Canada, United States and Mexico and then uh, Panama looking also not too uh, bad. So uh, there are kind of four teams in there. It is a struggle, but I think that the United States, Mexico and Canada will in the end come through. So yeah, that's it from me for now for uh, the World Cup qual qualifiers. We'll end the international week. Safe. You will get more international unpacking very soon, but not uh, tomorrow. But other than that, I would like who do you think will qualify from uh, the regions that I've shown you now? Which qualifiers are you following? Give me a thumbs up uh, if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so that you're updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!